welcome to, I guess, my trailer. We are on vacation and um, I've been doing a little bit of slow stitching amongst other things and I'm working on my Roxy creation down the garden path. And today I worked on the path itself, as you can see here. So I've spent a fair bit of my time sitting in the sun doing the slow stitch. There's been a fair bit of wind, so I haven't been able to do any recording, verse, voice recording while I'm outside, and I know that this is sounding a little hollow, and again, I'm sitting in the trailer and it's too windy outside, but I just thought I would get this to you. So what I'm doing here is working on the stones that make, the pot, the, make up the path from the garden gate to the lace or the shrubs that will take us into the garden. So what I'm doing is just going in circles with different shades of gray. So here we have a gray black and I have a gray green that I work on. And I'm just going around with a running stitch. There's the gray green and the gray Again, all the yarns that I use in the fabrics are from the thrift store and would have been thrown out. I've done some uh, running stitch on the garden where I'll put my carrots and peas and my other vegetables. So I'm just continuing to work on the path. I thought that I would like to embroider some of those pink flowers on that um, green piece of fabric. and. I'm not going to put the tree there anymore, but I think I'm going to put a chair on the plain green spot. So when I was sitting in the trailer working, I came. I decided to do one of our pots since that was a last visit. And at the thrift store, I found those buttons. So I've added that and I'm continuing now to fill in the stones. I've finished the stones now and I'm adding some out, outlining or it's a darker gray green in between the stones as they appear on the, on the path just to add some um, demarcation between the stones. I did use a black and it was too dark and I used a dark brown and that was too dark so I landed on two threads of this dark gray green and I like this. I didn't go all the way around the stones. I did again that seemed to be too harsh an outline, but I just did where the stones meet themselves in the path. I like that the stones have different textures when you walk down a garden path and on vacation I've been paying attention to the paths that we walk on. All of the stones are different in different shapes and different grains running through them, so I think that the uh, path that I've made has captured that. I'm not really happy with the pot that I put on it. It doesn't stand out enough, but uh, I don't dislike it enough to take it out. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding, I've decided to put a lawn chair, an iron lawn chair in this green area. And so I'm going to use some lace to represent the iron work around it. And I am just uh, couching that on the um, onto the fabric, which is just stitching around it as we go around. What I'm finding is that as I add more um, elements to the garden path on top of other elements, I'm having to use pliers to pull my needle through, but that's all right. I can do that. So I'm just going to continue to couch down the lace around the outside of the chair.
I like how the lace is standing out and you'll see that more when it's finished but it actually looks like an iron work. So then while I'm um, off camera I add a piece of rose lace that I have to make up the back and you see it here and now I am couching on the seat of the chair and I'm just doing I'm going to do a bit of weaving to create the iron seat. The wrought iron lawn chair that I'm going to for is one of those um, antique sort of filigree ones and I think I've achieved it quite nicely here. I'm, I'm pleased with it anyway. So I continue to just lay down the uh, my yarn on the seat until I get enough enough that I can weave through them and then I will begin to weave the other direction. And now I'm going to start to weave um, over and under and over through my seat to create the grid work. Making the seat of the chair. And I tack the yarn down under, going by going into my fabric and coming back out between each row. And once I have it all, the grid work in, now I'm making small X's over the places where the two yarns meet to hold it in place, and again to give it that extra depth that a wrought iron chair would have. And I'm just, I off camera continue to finish the chair up. I do running stitch, stitches to make the arms and the legs. And here's a picture of the finished lawn chair. As I said, I'm quite pleased with how it came out. So then the next thing I do is I start working on my pots that sit by the fence on the garden, in the garden path. And here I've just done um, filler stitches in one direction and then I come in and go under and over and under. Um, I don't count the number of stitches, I just pull it through. And I'm making more what I would say a like a uh, fruit basket or a bushel basket would look like. And I like the way that, that has turned out. And I'm sorry, I'm going to bump you here in a few minutes. I don't have a really good setup for my um, my camera in the trailer, but I wanted to take you along for what I'm doing. So here you can see what the finished basket looks like, and I'm going to move on to making my yellow roses. So the yellow roses, I'm using three different colors of yellow thread. I'm using all six strands. And I start by, in the middle, making a colonial knot. You'll see me do that in a minute. And then I just go around Make the sure outside you got your of that my knot, bag making and everything small you want to take stitches with you. until my rose is the size that I want it to be. You've got some or on Tylenol for And it was on this arthritis. piece here where it, every once in a while I'd have to go and get my pliers to pull the yarn through. So here I'm going to come up from the center and make my colonial knot, which is, oh no, I'm still going around the other one, sorry, thought I was done that. Uh, click, clearly this is a voiceover. I like to pull the colonial knot up so that it pops out when I'm doing the roses like this. All right, I 
Should be done this rose in a minute. By using different colors um, for the yellow, I hope to add depth. And you might notice I've added um, some flowers around the lawn chair. And with the weeds, what I'm going to tie this all together with is um, flowering wildflowers tend to migrate into your gardens. And so I'm going to, through the all of this, including the vegetable patch, I'm going to continue with my wildflowers popping up every once in a while. And here's the finished product. You see the wildflowers, and I've had to put a little bit of yellow around the pots to make it look like rose leaves have fallen down. My chair, I'm really proud of that chair, I like it. As I said, the uh, pot with the plastic buttons, flowers on it, the buttons came in to, were on a sweater that was quite soiled, so I took them off to use in this project. And my roses, so I think the top of my um, down the garden path is done and I'll now start to work on the green hedges which is the green lace that I've cut apart and uh, move on to my vegetable patch but I think I will wait to do that until I get home so thank you so much for coming along and I hope this hasn't video hasn't been too distracting